Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that is the most off-road capable Bronco ever made. That is the 2022 Ford Bronco Raptor. At over 85 inches wide, this thing is bigger than many full-size pickup trucks, possibly negating some of the benefits of its mid-size platform. So is this massive Bronco any good here at my favorite off-road testing grounds of Barnwell Mountain? Stay tuned to find out. All right, gearheads, you know where I am. I'm just outside of Gilmer, Texas at my favorite off-road testing grounds of Barnwell Mountain. Huge thanks to them for letting me come out and film this. Huge thanks to Ford for finally bringing me the Bronco Raptor. I am so excited for today getting to test this thing off-road, but let's come in and talk about what makes this thing so different. I'll go ahead and start under the hood. So the last Bronco we had, had the small four cylinder in the Everglades that was a 2022 model year specific vehicle that was announced at the Chicago Auto Show alongside this beast. This decidedly does not have that little 2.3 four cylinder. This has their three liter EcoBoost twin turbo making 418 horsepower and 440 pound feet of torque mated to the 10 speed automatic that Ford and General Motors co created. And yes, Ford put their own spin on once they got it uh, back home and in their Ford products. So this thing is quite stout in the performance arena. Huge thanks to Port Ford Performance for all that additional performance. You can see here on the underside of the hood that is actually functional ducting uh, on the hood. And then I'm gonna call out just over here and over here, we do have heat extractors on the front fenders as well, but close the hood. You can see heat extractors, heat extractors here. A lot of heat extraction going on to help cool this three liter EcoBoost uh, V6 uh, that really does make quite a bit of power. But let's talk about what makes this thing so special for off-roading because there is a lot to it. As you can tell from these front fenders, this thing is absolutely massive. It is over 85 inches wide, hence the three marker lights under or under the hood over the word Ford there in the grill. You also have your corner marker lights on your rear view mirrors out there. So yes, this thing is as wide as a Ram TRX or the F-150 Raptor, but it is based on the Ranger platform. So this is a mid-size vehicle. So it is incredibly wide and all of that comes down to just how wide the track is on this. You can see how huge these over fenders are compared to a standard Bronco. And that is because the tires in which they have to cover are 37 by 12 inch rubber. These things are absolutely massive. They are BF Goodyear, uh, BF Goodrich KO2 all terrains. They are uh, Baja Champion tires. They are meant for some really heavy off-road use. They're really good. Perhaps the gold standard when it comes to uh, consumer off-road tires. They are wrapped around these 17-inch beadlock capable wheels. I, I just love that Ford is going with 17-inch as the wheel size on all their off-road uh, vehicles. We had 35s on that Bronco Everglades that we tested last. And again, on 17 inch wheels, here we've got 37s on 17s, and it just gives you all that sidewall to play with. Absolutely like that. You can see from this angle, we do have a revised front bumper, front approach angle, all that good stuff. In fact, I'm gonna pull out the numbers because there are a lot of numbers to talk about on this when it comes to off-roading from your approach angle, your departure angle, ground clearance, and all of that. So. Approach on this is a whopping 47.2 degrees. Breakover is 30.8 degrees, thanks to the 13.1 inches of ground clearance and the relatively short wheelbase compared to, well, the Ford F-150 Raptor or the Ram TRX, uh, which I compared this to on width earlier. And then the departure angle is a, an astounding 40.5 degrees as well. 
It can also ford up to 37 inches of water, which is a little bit more than the Everglades, which is a little bit more than the Badlands with Sasquatch package. So yes, this thing is uh, very capable when it comes to that. The suspension on this, I'm gonna try and do my best showing you uh, some of the suspension components on this one. Uses some Fox shocks front and rear. We get 13 inches of travel up front, 14 inches of travel in the rear, which is quite impressive. This thing is meant to do some Baja running, some fast off-road racing, because after all, the Raptor, specifically the Velociraptor, was a fast dinosaur, right? So you need a fast vehicle to back up that name. And this is using what Ford calls their Haas 4.0, or High Performance Off-Road Stability Suspension System. Yeah, they get kind of cutesy with some of their names and acronyms, but it does have those Fox Live Valve shocks with remote reservoirs back here in the back. Like I said, 14 inches of travel back here in the back. And you can see the uh, shock with the remote reservoir right there. So uh, very impressive uh, suspension travel in this. And then underbody protection, there is a lot in this. So we came out here in Chevy's biggest and baddest, the Silverado ZR2 Bison, and it had five skid plates. It's the only, vehicle from Chevrolet uh, in the Silverado line that gets that much uh, underbody protection, but this thing has got some massive underbody protection. It says complete underbody protection. So you can see this massive steel bash plate that goes way up underneath right here. It goes up underneath and protects uh, all the underbody down there. The uh, muffler even has protection around it to guide rocks over and around it. It, it, it is very impressive uh, what Ford has done to protect the underside of this vehicle. I could probably get a better shot uh, from the side here because we've got a whole lot more clearance. But yeah, there's your muffler right there and you can see the rock protection in front of it, but all the different skid plates underneath this. It is uh, very well set up for protecting the underside of the vehicle. And coming around back behind the vehicle, where it's lifted up a little bit. You can see the steel rear bumper back here gives you a little extra protection. You get that R for Raptor on the differential cover, but you can see the suspension mounting points are right there next to the tires. So you really do have a lot of ground clearance underneath here, and there isn't much you have to worry about when it comes to uh, other components eating into that 13.1 inches. You can see even the exhaust is tucked up underneath here with some turndowns. Interestingly enough, the two tow hooks back here are angled down, but uh, that's really the only thing that looks like it, it could catch too much back here outside of perhaps your tow hitch. And then back here on the back, you get that spare 37 inch tall tire. Uh, if you wanna see what this does to on-road living, I've got a full video uh, speaking about what it's like to live with this thing on road, but uh, yeah, <laughs> off road, it's got the chops for sure. We even have rock sliders here with the heavy duty uh, steel steps mounted to it. So if you wanted to take those steps off for better off road angles, you could, and you still have those rock sliders. And I already mentioned these are beadlock capable wheels. And yes, this thing is meant for rock crawling. So, uh, We've seen a little damage uh, on this vehicle. This one is, as I said, a 2022 model. Not much has changed outside of the price for 2023. So yeah, uh, this is about what you'd get, but they've kept this 2022 in the fleet uh, for extended testing because again, mechanically it's the same. And yeah, this one is nearing the end of its life as a test vehicle for journalists. So there's a lot of stuff on this one that has seen some wear and tear from other journalists. You can see the heat extractors again there on the hood and on the side, your marker lights for just how wide this thing is. And even the back fenders back here are so big and massive. This is probably what you're gonna catch on most things right here. So this is actually a removable panel. And you can see because they are so wide, some of the fender is actually attached to the door there. You do get an upgraded interior in our model. We've got the leather package with suede inserts and all the code orange. So it is actually a very dark blue. You can probably tell here in the sunlight, but in low light, it almost looks black. As a Houston Astros fan, I absolutely love this navy and orange interior. 
Ghost Rose, right? But that's enough talking about this vehicle. Let's see what this thing is like when we get it out on the trails, see what all of those different uh, upgrades to the exterior and to the mechanicals are like, and we can talk a little bit about the upgraded uh, software components of this, so different drive modes, GOAT modes, there's another acronym, goes over any or all terrain. Yeah, there really is a lot going on on this one. I didn't even mention the steel bumpers with removable end caps here and those rigid fog lights. Like I said, if you want to see a complete walk around of this and what it's like in daily life, go check out our on-road test of this. But uh, yeah, let's get behind the wheel, see what this thing is like out on the trails. All right, gearheads, behind the wheel of the Ford Bronco Raptor. Lots of different GOAT modes that I mentioned goes over all terrain. So I'll go through them all right here. We've got normal, we've got off-road, we've got Baja, we've got rock crawl, we've got sport, tow haul, and slippery. Given what we are about to do, I'm just gonna put it in off-road. And because this has an electronic transfer case, because everything up here is electronic as well, these are presets. It, it's off-roading presets. It changes your gauge cluster. It changes uh, what your hero buttons are doing and it changes uh, whether you're in two high, four high, four low, all of that based on your drive mode. So you can see now I've got the rear locked up. I'm in four high and that's really it for that. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the stay bar disconnect here in a little bit because you can actually do that under load, which is kind of crazy in this, but we are going to take it down our usual test trail here at Barnwell Mountain, and that is called Twister. Uh, it is a tight course. So as I mentioned earlier, we took the TRX uh, down this very same course, but as soon as we got down there, all the trees growing in around you, I felt very claustrophobic. What's interesting about this vehicle is it's as wide as that TRX, 85 and some odd inches wide, a whole chunk of that is fender up front, which I cannot see from here at all. I would say that would be one advantage of wheeling with the doors off on the Raptor is I, I cannot see the true corners of this vehicle. I've got my sight lines on the front of the hood. Uh, I could see the rear fenders in my mirrors, but those front ones, they're gone to me. So. I do have 360 cameras. I do have a dedicated camera button, but this layout is kind of trash, to be honest. Uh, it's very grainy. The forward facing is a little weak. Being that we are off road, I've got a full 180 view of the front bumper. You can see it's in three different segments. So that helps a little, but again, it does not help me see the corners of the vehicle, the true corners. Pulling forward down into Twister, there really isn't a whole lot going here. There's a, a cliff drop off. There's some fun going down this way. I am going to do the two foot off road method where I, I give it a little bit of uh, th constant throttle and I modulate my forward momentum with my left foot on the brake pedal. It was taught to me by my good friend Sue Mead, uh, who is just a legendary off roader. So if she knows, well, then yeah probably good for me as well yeah but here we go coming down we're gonna get a little bit of a drop off here and now we're going down 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 yeah these big 37s don't really care when it comes to uh, wheeling out here uh, the real test is not really so much this obstacle that is now back behind me as much as it is the trail <laughs> up in front of me. Again, this thing is wide, it's tall. I've got over 13 inches of ground clearance uh, on top of the fact that, you know, it is still a Bronco. So if I had the roof off here, uh, I would probably get whacked by this limb hanging in front of me. There's just a lot of growth coming in on this tight trail here uh, that yeah, maybe something in the true midsize class, not something that was midsize and is now the size of full size uh, would probably be best. I do have those trail sites up front that I could uh, tie some cables to to protect my windshield, but this trail really isn't gonna do much to it. Now, 
I'm gonna go ahead and turn here and show you the two different options I could take up here. Truth or insane, as I've been calling it, because the right side, absolutely insane. You would have to be in a purpose-built off-roader. I'm gonna point towards it just a little bit more, make sure I get it on camera. That thing is nuts there on the right side. You can see my cameraman is going up exactly where I'm going. Huge thanks to Eric uh, for not only coming out here to shoot with me, but also be my spotter. But yes, that's the trail that I'm gonna be actually going up in this wide beast. Again, partially due to the size of this thing, I could go up that middle one, but we also have some low-hanging uh, vegetation, I will say, uh, that direction as well. And uh, so we're, we're just not going to risk that one so much. But we're going to come over and explore this side just a little bit. I'm going to have to hang a little far to the right just because of some of the obstacles here. But I am... As I said, in four high, this thing has got the rear diff locked. I, yeah, this is this is nothing, but it is just a little tight. Let's see if Eric can make it walking backwards on this crazy train. Again, I've got my trail cam here with a full 180 degrees of visibility as I come up and over the crest and dip a little bit into the ravine. Don't go back any further. <laughs> You've only got about a foot before you're gone. But yeah, this thing, the more compact wheelbase of this is where it really has a leg up over something like the TRX or the F-150 Raptor because that does make this thing more maneuverable and gives you that better breakover angle and those insane approach and departure angles of over 40 degrees. Uh, this really is a very stout overall platform that is capable of quite a lot. I will say the one downside of this trail cam in front of me is how much it flattens uh, the terrain around me. I know I'm about to yeah, dip down, but that did not come across on camera at all. Um, yeah, the, the, there's a lot of terrain change out here, but it does help me avoid things like giant rocks, giant obstacles. I will say we did take this through the rock garden earlier and put it in rock crawl mode, which does automatically engage this front camera and it puts uh, trajectory lines of where those tires are going to be. So that does help a little bit, but again, don't, do not do stuff like that without a spotter. Again, huge thanks to Eric. Go follow his uh, business. I'll link his channel, uh, but he's he runs one-off productions and he does some amazing shots for us as well as uh, for himself. So I've been through here in many different things. And again, I would say the wheelbase, breakover approach and departure angles are what are really gonna make this thing win out uh, taking these different washouts and terrain changes uh, very maneuverable. Whereas I'm watching Eric, but I know these, this section of the trail quite well. And uh, I'm just making sure I'm not doing anything insane, but I can feel the vehicle absolutely flexing underneath me. Very, oh, very twisty, very fun. And a lot of flex going on. Probably gonna be showing you Eric's footage here. Uh, but in here, uh, I mean, I'm staying fairly consistent here. We're going to give you a little front flex, climb this hill. Let's see if we can get the, oh, that was weak. All right. So we shall continue. I do have that stay bar disconnected. The pitch and roll in here right now, climbing this hill on the side is crazy. But yeah, this completely capable. Those 37 inch tall tires, they are KO2s. They're gripping, they're grabbing. I will say, again, talking about this thing being at the end of its press vehicle life, they've been eaten up. So I am not the first journalist to have this. Uh, the one on the back is flat, it has a plug in it, and there are some massive chunks missing out of it. These KO2s have been put through it, but even still here, I, I'm not even aired down. This thing is quite the capable beast. So now we're gonna come around to my favorite little off-road area here at Barnwell. 
Uh, it used to be crossover friendly. I say used to be because various different uh, Toyota groups, Jeep groups, off-roading groups have come out here and absolutely torn this thing up. And you can see at speed that stay bar automatically reconnected. But yes, weather and various off-road groups have absolutely worn this thing out. Like I said, it used to be crossover friendly. Now I'm just a little worried again about the size of this uh, beast. Now, this does have uh, various different uh, off-road modes that could help like downhill descent control, basically off-road cruise control. But again, I'm just modulating it myself with my left foot on that brake pedal. I am pointed down at about 11 degrees right now, which is less than my uh, driveway at home so this really is nothing it's just the terrain is not smooth like a driveway at home so yes there there's some twisting and some torquing underneath me and then again the narrowness of this trail and i'm gonna have a little bit of a height restriction here in a little bit thanks to this uh pine tree in front of me and this one lone pine cone that is deciding to hang down and make sure that uh, I get a little rash on my molded in color uh, hard top here in the Bronco but yes this would normally test breakover angle nice little drop off right there and then yeah I'm pointed down 14 degrees yeah pr pretty stout little washout there there's my pine cone friend but yeah all out this is a fun little section uh, for me to take pretty much anything and everything I take out here. I, I like to take it down this. Back when it was a little more crossover friendly, a little less washed out, um, we, we would have a lot of fun in uh, things from like a Forester Wilderness, Outback Wilderness. Uh, but now, especially like right here, I, I'm at a 13, 14 degree roll, just kind of climbing along the side of this. It feels crazy inside the vehicle. So I'm actually gonna creep it down just a little bit. We're at 19 degrees now. So yeah, this thing, it may not look like much on camera, but it is absolutely fun and a little nerve wracking here inside. Now we're gonna ugh, climb up out of it and see, oh, oh, yeah, get out of here, boom, boom, boom. So yeah, you can see why I wouldn't wanna do that in a crossover much anymore. So this thing isn't just about slow hill climbs. I'm gonna go ahead and straighten my wheel out so you can see the gauge cluster in front of me here. We've got off-road, we've got Baja, but we also have rock crawl. And you can see this is shifting me into four low, which is requiring me to put it in neutral. 4x4 shift in progress, stay bar disconnected, I've got that rear locked, and put it back in drive. You can see, hopefully, my gauge cluster has changed here. I have my pitch and roll as well as my drivetrain stuff here with lock and unlock up front, and then, like I told you earlier, the front camera is engaged with trajectory. So, we're going to see exactly what Eric's got in mind for us here in this section that we've not taken anything else up out here at Barnwell. And dropping, oh yeah, there we go. For reference, we are at the top of that insane section of the climb I showed you from earlier. This is what would be waiting for you when you get up top. And you can see the value of having a good spotter telling you exactly what's about to happen, what wheels are about to do. He can see things that I cannot, like the fact that I'm about to come up on my driver's side. And even though I've got these cameras, oof, yeah, we're still in situations that I would not dare to come by myself. Again, I am doing the two foot method. I'm giving the throttle some consistent pressure with my right foot and modulating my momentum 
with the left foot brake. And here we go, climbing, climbing, climbing. Tell me when to straighten. Do I need a lock front? I lock fronts and rears and make sure it's in low. So now that we are set to go straight, we've got the front uh, axle, uh, we've got that front diff locked, we've got the rear diff locked, we've got the stay bar disconnected. We're going to test that 40 plus degree approach and departure angle uh, as we come up over this. Well, you come this way a little and then come in. Go, go that way. And now, here we go, set to climb. Slow. Left side's coming up, turn right, and now left's coming up. Oh my god. Just goodness. stay slow and steady and walk the back end up. You got clearance for days, you're just at a weird angle. Up, right, and up, left. <laughs> like I said, we have not taken any other vehicle here on the channel up that section. It is at the top of Insane, and a good spotter absolutely comes in handy. Find you a good one. <laughs> Do not go wheeling without a spotter, no matter what kind of camera system you have. Uh, it will always come back to bite you in the rear, uh, <laughs> whether figuratively or actually. Uh, but again, with 40 plus degrees of approach departure angle on this thing, uh, it is quite impressive. I can go ahead and unlock everything, connect that stay bar. Uh, we can go back to, I'm going to go into Baja for the segment we have coming up next. Very excited. This one, Baja mode, automatically again engages the front camera in this, four high, everything's turned off basically we've got the suspension in its softest setting we've got the exhaust in its loudest setting the steering in its sportiest setting and we can really test out that Haas suspension system or high performance off-road suspension system with those Fox off-road shocks 13 inches of travel in the front 14 in the back let's go Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, let's get it, oh, let's get it, oh, wow, this thing will jump, 13 inches of travel up front, 14 inches of travel in the rear, this thing really, really likes to go at speed, and yeah, this thing is quite fun out here on the trails. I would absolutely love to take this out to Baja to see what it's like in the dunes as a bucking Bronco using that mounting point back there by that large tire in the back uh, for a flag for sand dunes. This thing is built for off-road speed because that is what the Raptor name and Ford Performance is synonymous with ever since SVT and Ford made that first gen Raptor so many years ago. That's why the suspension on this sits out on the corners. That's why this thing is so wide. It needs a big, wide, firm base. This thing is more aggressive than the Ranger Raptor on which it is based. This thing is absolutely nuts, but it all kind of leaves me wondering why on earth uh, you would even spend 81,000 as this 22 model is spec, but 86,000 as they start for the 2023 model year and come out here and do some of the stuff that I've done in this one in a vehicle that you've paid nearly 90,000 or maybe even more than $90,000 on. Maybe I'm just a little too working class to fathom bringing a $90,000 SUV that I've spent my hard earned money on out and doing crazy stuff like this in. So it really makes me wonder how many people that are really buying these can afford the upkeep, the longevity, replacing those 37 inch KO2 tires uh, when they need it, insuring this thing, paying for the fuel economy in this thing, because 
Uh, I'm currently getting 12.4. I've seen at best 13 MPG in this and you know it takes premium fuel. This thing is thirsty and it's expensive. It's a lot of fun and I can absolutely see now why you would want this maybe over that F-150 Raptor because of its shorter wheelbase. Sure, it's as wide as that big truck, but having that short wheelbase really makes it a lot of fun when it comes to crawling and doing some more technical maneuvers and really makes it fun when at speed as well. This is a lot of fun. If you like this video and want to see more from us, be sure and find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Everything is at GT Garage Talk, or you can go read more about this at GTGarageTalk.com. Be sure and hit that like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all the things that you know to do to let the algorithms know to show you more content from us because we do have the F-150 Raptor coming next and I absolutely plan on bringing it out here to Barnwell. But as for me, behind the wheel of the Ford Bronco Raptor, until next time, gearheads, bye. The landing on this is insane. Woo! Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I'm filming. That's a wrap.